Welcome to Coffee, Culture, and the Capital with Sophia and Greg. Uh, I'm Greg. And I'm Sophia. And we have an interesting list of topics that we're going to be diving in today. That's right. Yeah, so we're going to look at some Democratic governors have formed an alliance on abortion rights. Surprise, surprise. Yes. And then we're going to talk about two bills that California Family Council is opposing That's right. that butcher the meaning of words pertaining to what it means to be a human being. That's right. And this is really concerning uh, mm -hmm. since when you're writing laws, uh, the words are supposed mm -hmm. to mean specific things. But what do you do when legislators butcher them? So we'll be talking about that. Yeah. So let's dive right in. So the Democrat governors forming an alliance on abortion rights. There is 20 Democrat governors that have joined it. They've announced it as a nonpartisan alliance, but so far it's just Democrats. And to no shock to anyone, Governor Gavin Newsom is who started and formed this alliance. That's right. He wants to be the abortion leader of the nation, right? Uh, offering abortion to anybody who wants it as a solution to anyone who has an unplanned pregnancy. Uh, if you remember, mm -hmm. he was the same uh, guy who uh, put up billboards in conservative states saying that uh, loving your neighbor uh, was the same as offering them abortion, right? And so, in quoting Jesus on, on mm -hmm. top of that. So, he is all in uh, mm -hmm. on abortion, and of course, you know, it's full of deception, mm -hmm. harmful to people, and it's really going to take folks, uh, pro-lifers, to continue to stand up and speak up with the same kind of confidence that he does. Yeah, right? and you make a good point when you say it's full of deception, because it's called the Reproductive Freedom Alliance. That's so, right. they're pushing for abortion rights, and there is nothing reproductive about killing a child in the womb. No, you're right. It's, it's, it's one of the deceptions they use. And, of course, you don't want to lead with, I want to protect the right for people to kill their unborn children. I mean, th that w those words are accurate, but it conjures up in people's minds mm -hmm. a negative picture, a, well, an accurate picture about abortion. So you gotta, you got to change it up. I mean, wh but if you, if you say, hey, reproductive, everybody wants, everybody likes reproductive things. I mean... Mm -hmm. We love babies. Everybody has a warm, cuddly uh, a view of little children, right? And freedom, right? Who, who wants to be against freedom? Mm -hmm. And Governor Newsom, when announcing this, he said one of the main reasons he wanted to start this is because mm. he had a moral obligation to uh. do so. And you think of moral obligations... I can't imagine saying I have a moral obligation to make sure women can continue to kill children in the womb. Isn't that interesting how he feels mm. free to talk about morality when mm -hmm. he typically accuses, you know, the culture accuses Christians of imposing its morality on other mm -hmm. people. But there he is out there. No, He knows people down deep inside have moral convictions and mm -hmm. he's got to convince those people who might have a hesitation, a, a conscience irritation regarding abortion. So he comes with confidence saying what he's doing is moral, mm -hmm. right? And because he's got great hair, <laughs> right, people believe him. Yeah. yeah, so it will be interesting to see what this group ends up doing. They they just said they're going to be coming together to kind of make sure they're all on board with the same plans and try to push for similar legislation across the state. So it'll be interesting to see how they do this. It's yeah. So far we have California is obviously a part of it. Other states like Colorado, Delaware, Washington, Minnesota, New Mexico. So there's 20 states involved in it, but hopefully nothing too large comes of this. Yeah, we'll see. People got to stand up and fight back. So, mm -hmm. Well, that's not the only bad news we have, unfortunately. We have SB 59. It was a bill that has been introduced here in California by Senator Nancy Skinner. And do you want to give a little rundown? Yeah, and Nancy Skinner is from the Berkeley area mm -hmm. and um, stuff by the, in the Bay. Uh, and Berkeley, you know, they have a university there known for being pretty darn liberal part of the state, mm -hmm. kind of a, uh, same as San Francisco. And so she's always introducing things that are, you can expect, uh, way on the far left side of things. But she's introduced two bills we're going to talk about today that really do butcher what it means uh, to be a man or a woman. Now, here in California, they've been trying to, they've been over the past, you know, 
five, six years, uh, been changing what the word man and what the word woman means, right? Um, and there are consequences uh, that. And so she's introduced to Bill. It's a freebie. It's, uh, uh, it's, it was regarding uh, some, uh, something that men don't have a whole lot of knowledge about, but it's uh, women's feminine products, right? And so she believes feminine products should be free in all state bathrooms, right? Um, and, but the crazy thing is that, that she is not just including them in uh, women's bathrooms, mm -hmm. she's also including them in men's bathrooms. Yeah, so at first glance, this bill, it looks, okay, we're providing these free menstrual products to women. This is going to be helpful. This is going to be great. Oh, wait, they also need to be in men's restrooms. And what's also kind of ironic about this is Senator Skinner is the chair of the California Legislative Women's Caucus. That's right. So she's leading the Women's Caucus. She claims, in quote, she said, the simple act of ensuring access to menstrual products respects an essential bodily function that has been shrouded in shame. Okay, there's parts that quote that, okay, but you're now putting it in a men's restroom. That is not an essential bodily function for a man. No man has a period and needs menstrual products. Well, that's you're, but you're not enlightened, right? I mean, the definition that California uses for mm -hmm. a man is someone who thinks they're a man, right? So anybody can take the word man, mm -hmm. and whether you're male or female, and take that identification on for themselves. So when anyone can be a man, that means no one knows what the word means anymore. It doesn't really tell you anything. It's not a description of anything. Well, you know, it, it, that's why we had this issue the last time we had this uh, podcast. We're trying to figure out why the Supreme Court justice of the land can't figure out or define what a woman is, right? Mm -hmm. And so the same thing is happening here um, with women's products, but they're men's products too. So I don't get it. Yeah, and um, Assemblymember Agia Curry, she is the vice chair of yeah. the Legislative Women's Caucus, and she is also the co-author of SB 59. And on their press release of this bill, she stated, I am part of a generation that has let discomfort with a health issue leave women behind in accommodating what is a normal physical function. And this is interesting to me. So here they are in their press release claiming they're fighting for women, and trying to support women with these normal bodily functions. Well, there now that's if women, with the word woman has to do with their physical equipment, right? So she's flipping back to the old definition, mm -hmm. right, of woman. But what about all the women out there who don't uh, need menstrual products, right? Aren't they women too? Because that's the new definition mm -hmm. that all these men out there who think they're women are women too. Right? It's, it doesn't make any sense. You can't consistently live in this world. You know, I mean, they're trying. Um, but even on, on these press releases, you see them flop back into what they know to be true. That mm -hmm. women are physical. <laughs> it's a physical attribute. And men are different. And they have different physical attributes. Yeah, so SB 59 is not only a deceptive bill by making it look like they're fighting for women and women's products to be free in the restrooms it also it disregards the dignity of women as it's blurring the lines of the biological differences between a male and a female no you're right and and, and i know a lot of you are out there uh i don't want to deal with this mm -hmm. what a mess yeah, that's just california mm -hmm. folks we've been doing that for uh year after year and it's getting more and more extreme mm -hmm. you know we have a bill this year that's actually going to tell judges to remove children from their parents' custody if they don't agree with their uh, kid who thinks he's the opposite sex. So you're going to lose your kids. You're losing your job you're, if, if you don't go along with this stuff. So at some point, silence is causing in, you know, terrible harm to young people, right? So this is a crazy bill, but that's why we got to stand up 
when something's crazy, mm -hmm. you got to call it crazy. Yeah, and there is a hearing for this bill in the Governmental Organization Committee on March 13th. Okay. Or March 14th. So we will be posting the phone numbers to call. If you check out our Instagram, the phone numbers and what senators are in this committee are already up there. That's right. And it's important to call in and urge these senators to vote no on this. Absolutely. And, unfortunately, we have another bill by Senator Skinner, That's SB right. 345, and do you want to dive a little bit into yeah, that? Yeah, this is another language uh, change that she wants to be made uh, of what it means to be a human being. And, and what she's, this bill particularly does, it takes all the instances where um, it mentions unborn uh, persons, um, or what was the other term? Um... It's unborn person. It's changing it um, to unborn beneficiary. Oh yeah, in un, in uh, in uh, well, in fetus. Mm -hmm. I mean, ultimately, what what they're trying to do is every time where it says unborn baby or unborn child, change that to fetus. Now, why do they want to do that? They what what, what is the point of changing what everybody calls? a child when they're in the womb. We call it a baby, unborn baby. Mm -hmm. When we when we want the child, we use that language. Um, but why why call it a fetus? Mm -hmm. Why why and what she wants to do is every instance in the law where it says unborn child, unborn person, she wants to flip that over to say fetus. See that it what? It wasn't accurate before? No, it was accurate, but the the use of the word fetus is a dehumanizing term, mm -hmm. right? In order to justify abortion, you have to take away the humanity of the human being that's in the womb, right? And so if you refer to an unborn child, you're adding va your language is adding value. Mm -hmm. But if you call it a fetus, I mean, nobody ever has fetus showers mm -hmm. for children. Why, why do we do that? Because fetus is so clinical and so, you know... Oh, yes, it's a, it's an accurate term, but nobody, it takes away all the love. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why we don't use fetus when we're talking about um, unborn kids when we announce mm -hmm. it and our, our baby announcements and we tell our kids that we're pregnant. You know, your, your wife tells your other kids that they're pregnant. They never use the mm -hmm. word fetus. Like mom's going to, mom's got a fetus in her, yeah. in her womb. That's never used. Mm -hmm. And that's on purpose. Yeah, and I'm honestly tired of the... Choosing to call a fetus when it is unwanted or unplanned, but then it is a baby that you're excited and having baby showers for when it is wanted and planned. And I think that also ultimately goes back to just the consistent removing of God from this nation and the consistent removing of God from the legislature in California yeah. because that's where we get our value of life from. And they're just continuing to remove that. And that's why now... They can remove the value and the meaning and the love behind baby and unborn child that That's you right. mentioned and use fetus to, again, just be able to further push their abortion agenda. So as this bill comes before the hearing, that's exactly what we're going to be arguing, telling them, what, why are you doing this? You know, what, what's the whole purpose of this? It seems to me that you're trying to dehumanize the uh, unborn child for only one purpose. So no one feels any compassion when, you just, when you're just having to kill the child. Uh, when you want to kill the child, while you justify killing the child, right? Mm -hmm. So that's what we're here for. Uh, that's why you guys have sent, it up, sent us up here and support us. Um, so we're going to make those arguments uh, as the bill comes forward. Yeah, and these, these bills are honestly crazy that people are trying to change the language like this and trying to put menstrual products in a man's restroom. But that's why a lot of people, like you mentioned earlier, kind of say, oh, just forget about California and don't worry about California, whatever, it's just there. But people need to realize what happens in California is what happens across the nation. And California, unfortunately, is inspiring to those other states right. that are ran by Democrats. And so we're seeing... We're seeing a bill we had last year, SB 107, was an awful bill. We're kind of watching that bill in different forms now happen in other states. And so that's why it is important to focus on California. It's important to call your legislators, and it's important to try to make a stop to these crazy bills. You're right. Well, so speaking of how the legislature likes to kind of change words and the meaning of words, you want to share a little story on well, that? Well, um it's very hard for uh, legislators to stay consistent on what it means to be a male or female, right? 
um, in their own language, they know that there is such a thing as a male or a female. And for and uh, a couple years ago, uh, the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, chair uh, announced to everybody before her first committee hearing of the year that they were going to get rid of gendered language. They're not going to use her or him or she anymore. They were just going to use uh, gender neutral pronouns, right? And so I put together this video just to show you she could not follow her rules for not even 30 seconds. Right after she announced them, she immediately in the next sentence started to use gendered language. And she catches herself, right? So it's, it's just a funny video just to, just to remind you how inconsistent mm -hmm. and crazy these, uh, this new gender ideology really is. Well, let's check it out. And uh, our first order of business is to approve the committee rules. Uh, I'd like to note uh, in uh, respecting the fact that we are now a state recognizing uh, the non-binary designation uh, as a, a gender, uh, he and she, uh, we are now merging them so that we are using what my uh, grammat grammar teacher would have had a heart attack over. We are using the phrase they. Um, and replacing uh, other designations so that it's a gender neutral designation of they. And we've done that through most of the, basically that's the primary reforms and revisions to the committee rules. So, um, uh, and I appreciated Senator Monning observing uh, that the chair is she, but uh, in the spirit of gender neutrality for the rules of this committee, it uh, now designates the chair as they. Um, so the world is a different place. Uh, my grammar teacher is long gone, and I won't be hearing from her. Um, and if any of you, from them, exactly, from they. Uh, but uh, for any of you who may hear from an old grammar teacher, blame it on me. So Well, we should, as it is rooted in our nation's constitution that a woman has a right to control her own body and make her own choices. And uh, in consultation with her family or her doctor or with whomever she chooses. And I remember my parents saying, what possible right is it of the government to tell a woman what she should do with her body? Uh, to uh, use Martin Luther King as your reference, I think uh, besmirches his good reputation and the things that he stood for, which were equality and justice for all. Uh, we also need to uh, thank, by the way, our lead committee assistant for her service to the Senate uh, and this committee over the last several okay. years. She's not with us today, but I want to also give her a shout out. This, uh, again, with all the bills we hear, this is uh, we do, very, and so I wanted to thank her as well. Jocelyn, best of luck to you as well. Um, and I guess it's the Assembly Education Committee she's gone on to. So Michael Peterson has been a gentleman, uh, has done an extraordinary job on behalf of uh, his members and uh, is... And I won't be hearing from her. Um, and if any of you... From, from them, exactly. It's actually funny to watch that video and to see how they can't even keep up with their own lies. No, I know. And it got 45 to 48,000 views. So it really did expose how ridiculous mm -hmm. this all is. Hey, but one of the things we want to close our show with is um, highlighting a brave California teenager mm -hmm. who is taking on the gender ideology that actually did her grave harm. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about Chloe Cole. She is uh, an 18-year-old uh, Californian uh, who had just filed a lawsuit against Kaiser Permanente uh, for medical negligence. Now, she is something that we call a detransitioner. Mm -hmm. Uh, when she was a young girl, she just didn't feel as girly as all the other girls around her. She really thought maybe she was, she got this idea in her head that maybe she was trapped in the wrong body and that she was really a boy with a girl's body, right? And when she finally told her parents that's what she thinks 
is happening. Um, they took her to get some help, and all the counseling she got, all the doctor says, yeah, um, if you think you're a boy, then you're a boy, right? Um, and so they ended up giving her a double mastectomy at the age of 15, putting her on testosterone. But after a couple years, she had realized she had made a terrible, terrible mistake. Um, and so she's been going around the country testifying in legislature after legislature about the terrible effects of uh, what they call gender-affirming care. Um, but, it's, but, uh, but she's now suing Kaiser mm -hmm. because Kaiser did a couple things. Um, Kaiser didn't sufficiently warn her about all the side effects of these surgeries. Um, and they didn't sufficiently tell her that, you know, uh, th they told her there was only one real treatment for gender dysphoria. And that if she did not transition and do these surgeries and ch change her identity into a male identity, she was going to commit suicide. Mm -hmm. Right? And so she, her parents, everybody thought that they were doing the right thing. Um, but that wasn't true. There's all kinds of studies out there that says if you do not socially transition a child, you just let them go through puberty, they, 80 to 90% of kids eventually come to accept their sex. Mm -hmm. She didn't know that. The doctors didn't tell her, right? And now she's living with lots of regret, and they're getting sued, which is what should be happening. It's truly a heartbreaking story, and she actually held a press conference in front of a Kaiser here in California just this week, and okay. a line that she said in it that really stuck with me is she said, I was 15 when you cut into my body, ripped out my breast, and stitched me back up like I was your rag doll. You were on the wrong side of history and will always be remembered as child butchers. And that one, that's a hard line to like swallow and to hear. It's because she was confused or felt a certain way. She told this was she was told this was her only option and you think about so many girls or boys, like, even when I was growing up, I always, I played all the sports with the boys. I played with the boys at recess, and I liked fishing and all that. I didn't like dolls or anything like that, and it wasn't because I am a man. It was because I grew up with three brothers. Of course I was going to be into more of that stuff, and eventually now I, I always have my nails done. I have my earrings on. Like, I now am more into girly things, but... I never once questioned my gender or my sex because that wasn't ideologies thrown at me at that age. And you can imagine now that this whole idea of picking your gender mm -hmm. is something every mm -hmm. public school kid is learning. It's part of the curriculum, right? And uh, we're just letting all this happen. Mm -hmm. Folks, we got to speak up, speak out against this, the harm that's being done to this generation of kids um, you know, we're going to be living with it for years to come. So mm -hmm. now is the time to put a stop to it. Yeah. And so there's, we're going to be talking more about legislation over the next whole week. Some that are on, that we support and that will be good to kind of try to put a stop to this transgender ideology and also some that we oppose and is only trying to advance this ideology. So That's right. stay tuned to kind of know what, what's happening here at the Capitol and how you can make a difference. That's right. All right. Well, we will see you all next week.